So welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you guys are joining me today. And there's stuff happening up in the Appalachian area where hurricane victims are still needing help and help is being thwarted by authorities, local authorities there in the Appalachian area, uh, even to the point where they're threatening to arrest a pilot, helicopter pilot, who was coming in to help rescue people who could not otherwise escape because they were trapped. There was no way to leave. There was only uh, the only way out was through the air, and he and his son decided to fly up to North Carolina from South Carolina and render aid. And what did he get for that effort? Well, he was threatened to be arrested by the local fire chief there in North Carolina, uh, threatening to, if he were to go back and rescue any more people, they would arrest him. This is insane. There's other stories coming out there where the local Red Cross and FEMA are stealing people's donations. I don't have all the details on that story yet, However, that is being reported as well. So I don't know what's going on in New North Carolina right now with, with help and with the government and with uh, ordinary citizens trying to help their neighbors. This is absolutely insane. If you know of any of these stories, let me know in the comments or shoot me a direct message over on Twitter. I have all my info in the description down below. Let's go ahead and take a look at this story because this is insane. Happening over here in North Carolina, this uh, hero pilot risking his own life using his own resources to help get people out of danger. Let's take a listen to the story. Low cloud coverage is like lure. The cries for help from people stranded without food, water, or electricity hit social media soon after the flooding last Friday. But my parents are stuck there. Their address is <laughs> Banner Elk. They are in the first pondo. If you receive this, please give me a call back. Thank you. Sidham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I can hear the desperation in her voice. And this is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate for help. Sidham and his son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And his, his response was, there's so many messages, I, I don't think we can't not go help. Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out and go out help her in. Put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm going to take her down, come back. I'll take him, I'll come back, and then I'll get you, okay? I originally left my son co-pilot on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim, and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. And, and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son what we were going to do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe and he shut down the whole operation so at, at that point there was i felt like the conversation wasn't going any further and again he asked me to leave and and, and i said hey i have no problem getting out of your area if that's what you want us to do we'll, we'll leave no issue at that point i asked him you know what was the reason i had to leave them there and and he said again you're interfering with my operation i, I just need you to get out of the area i said sir i'm I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not going to leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're going to be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. Sure, he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people and 
I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explained. And she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation and um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Cinnamon is nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and, and they, they won't, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confronta confrontation with uh, Mr. Yeah, so there you go. This uh, assistant fire chief there in that county absolutely being a, I don't know what to describe him as outside of maybe he didn't want his glory to be stolen from being the hero fire chief coordinating the rescue efforts in that area. However, anytime there is a massive disaster, all help is welcome, especially if it's going to help advance rescue victims who otherwise couldn't be gotten to any quicker than outside of being airlifted out of there. What a absolute tragedy taking place there. And uh, that individual needs to be investigated. The uh, fire chief needs to be fired and possibly even arrested for uh, for neglecting victims who were on the mountain who needed to be rescued and there were means of being rescued. Uh, these people are absolutely disgusting. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any more info, let me know in the comments or reach out to me via Twitter. Uh, my DMs are always open. Uh, so uh, shoot me a DM if you have any more info. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, don't forget to hit, uh, hit that like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Have a great, great day.